we're going to prove a very special subgroup test that applies only to finite subgroups, but it's really handy. Let H be a non-empty, finite subset of a group G. Then the finite subgroup test says that H will be a subgroup of G if H is simply closed under the operation of G. That's all you need, and you get that H is a subgroup. Of course, if H is a subgroup of G, then it is necessarily the case that H is closed under the operation of G. So to prove that this is equivalent to the definition of a subgroup, we just need to assume this condition and show that it satisfies all the group properties. After the proof, we'll do a quick example showing that a finite subset is a subgroup using this test. There are also links in the description to my lesson on subgroups and my lessons on the other subgroup tests. First, associativity is granted because the operation in H is the same as that in G, so we know it is associative. Next, to prove that H contains the identity element, H is non-empty. So let's take an arbitrary element, say X, from H. Since H is finite, the order of X can't possibly be infinite. Recall that the order of an element is the smallest positive integer power you can raise that element to to get the identity. The order of X must be some finite number n because H is finite and closed. So since X is in H, X times X is in H. But also X times X times X is in H. All positive integer powers of x must belong to h, but h is finite, so there can't be infinitely many distinct powers of x. At some point, it must get to the identity. So since h is closed, x times itself, n times, is in h. But like we said, n is the order of x, so that's equal to the identity, and so the identity is in h. Once again, for clarity, if the order of x was not finite, then it would have infinitely many distinct powers, which would mean h is infinite because by its closure, it has to contain all of those powers of x. I'll leave links in the description to my lessons on order talking about this stuff if you need to review that. Next, we have to prove that H contains inverses, which is the hardest part. So let's say we take an arbitrary element A from our subset H. Now, if A is the identity, then the inverse of A is also the identity, which we already proved is in H. So we can move forward assuming that A is not the identity. If A is not the identity, then the order of A, the smallest power we need to raise it to to get the identity, must be greater than 1. And each power of A, A, A to the 2, A to the 3, and so on, all have to be elements of H. Again, this is a result of H's closure. Now again, we know the order of this element of H must be finite because H is finite and H contains all the powers of A. This sequence of powers of A goes on forever, even though it must have duplicate terms. Because it has duplicate terms though, we could take two terms from this sequence of powers of A, say AI and AJ, that are equal, but where one occurs later in the sequence than the other, say i is greater than j. For example, if the order of a happened to be 5, so a to the 5 is the smallest power of a giving the identity, then a to the 6 would be equal to a to the 1, for example. But once more, this infinite list of powers of A has to be in H by closure, but it can't actually contain infinitely many distinct powers of A because H is finite. So for sure, we can take two equal powers of A that occur at different points in the sequence. Then, by multiplying both sides of this equation on the right by A to the minus J, which we know exists, right, that is in the group G, Perhaps it's not in H, but it is in G. If we multiply both equations by that, what we get is A to the I minus J on the left by our exponent rules. And on the right, we would just get the identity E. So we have A to some positive power. I minus J is positive because I is greater than J. A to some positive power is the identity. But A is not the identity. 
So its order is greater than one, which means this power to which it takes on the identity, this power i minus j, has to be greater than one because the order of a is greater than one. But that means i minus j minus one is greater than zero. And clearly, since this is a positive integer, a to the i minus j minus one is an element of h because h is closed, so it contains all of these powers of a. So a to the i minus j minus one is an element of h. But remember, a to the i minus j equals the identity. So a to the i minus j minus one equals the identity, that's just a to the i minus j, times a to the minus one. And that is just a to the minus one. So a to the i minus j minus one, which is an element of h, we see equals a inverse. So we've shown that any element of h has an inverse also in h. Finally, closure was given. That's the one condition in this finite subgroup test. So we've proven the test is valid. If we have a non-empty finite subset of a group G, we've established that that subset being closed under the operation of G forces it to have all of the group properties. Thus, it would be a subgroup. Let's try it out. Consider this group G, the additive group of integers mod 10, and consider the non-empty subset of elements generated by two. So two, four, six, eight, zero, two, four, six, eight, zero, et cetera. Then we can take two arbitrary elements in our non-empty subset, say two times n and two times m. Those are just arbitrary elements of h since h contains multiples of two. Remember the operation here is addition mod 10. So if we add these two arbitrary elements, two times n plus two times m, well this is just n multiples of two plus m multiples of two mod 10 of course, and that's just n plus m multiples of two. And this is clearly an element of our subset h because that's what h contains is the multiples of two mod 10. Thus, we've shown by the finite subgroup test, since this finite subset that's not empty is closed under the operation of g, it must be a subgroup of g. I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and check out my abstract algebra course and abstract algebra exercises playlists in the description for more.